Hey finders, welcome back to Fortune Finds. Today I'm teaching you guys my long wear makeup routine. Makeup that you need to last for hours and hours and hours without really needing to touch it up, without it moving. It's going to really last because honestly, it has no other option. This was actually a requested video specifically for bridesmaid makeup, but this can be worn at any event. This is perfect summer makeup. If you're going to a wedding, if you're going to a prom, if you're going to any kind of event where you're gonna be outside or inside, it's humid, it's hot, you need to look good for hours on end, you need to look good in photos, you need to make sure that your makeup is there, it doesn't move, it's not fading, this is the video. For you so you're gonna need some setting powder and some setting spray I'm gonna be really focusing on the skin today I did do a really nice eye look but this is just a typical smoky eye it's super easy I literally used three eyeshadows and I did this because I wanted this to be a very timeless effortlessly chic eye look I want this to be a look that will go with any outfit of your choice whether you're wearing a bridesmaid dress or you're wearing jeans and a t-shirt whatever it may be and I'm also gonna give you guys some tricks towards the end on what you can bring with you to really help touch up your face if anything should go awry but if you follow these makeup steps you might just need to powder like once twice depending on how many hours you're gonna be there so I really hope that you guys enjoy this video I love that this is a requested video because I really want to know what you guys want to see at least I know that one person out there is super interested in this video so if you ever have a technique that you want me to teach you or you want me to review a product whatever product it may be be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know. You can also comment on my Instagram, message me on Instagram, you can message me on Twitter. I'll leave all my handles up here. Feel free to reach out. I'm really interested in hearing what it is you guys wanna see and I'm more than happy to help. We have a lot to get through. So without further ado, let's stop battling and let's get on to my long lasting makeup routine. So first and foremost, before we even get into the makeup, you definitely want to prep your skin. I washed my face and to wash my face today I used the fresh soy face cleanser and then I did go ahead and use a toner on a flat cotton pad. I used the Neutrogena toner and that's just to really ensure that you get every ounce of like gook off your face and then after that I exfoliated my face using the Dermalogica Daily Micro Foliant. This is like a powder. You take a little bit of powder in your hand, your hands are damp, rub it together and then just massage it into the skin and it's going to get rid of that dead layer of skin. Now this is really 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 important especially if you have dry skin because when your skin is dry it tends to absorb the makeup so after I exfoliated I went in with my favorite mask of all time this is the fresh rose face mask I left this on for about 20 minutes washed it off with warm water and then I patted my face dry with a towel for moisturizer today I'm gonna to be using the Pons dry skin cream I think this is nice it's very very light on the skin this is affordable so you can get this at Target CVS Walgreens wherever so I'm just gonna put this all over my skin and I like to really make sure that I get the areas that are very dry on me so that's my nose and that's the first place where my foundation concealer whatever it is runs away from especially because I have dry skin so you're constantly touching it so you really want that skin to be moisturized you don't want it to be dry so it doesn't absorb and I'm gonna go in with eye cream I have very dry under eyes so that is definitely an area on my face where I lose makeup the quickest because my skin will suck in that makeup or also it gets very crepey and dry looking this is the belief moisturizing eye balm this is my favorite pre makeup eye cream because it's thick and super moisturizing but it's not so thick where it feels greasy or it's going to make your makeup on top of it move so it is really nice and then I like to give my skin the most time possible to let all of that moisturization absorb tart lip scrub it's like so old but if you don't have a lip scrub don't go buy a lip scrub take a little bit of olive oil on your pointer finger and then just dip your finger in some sugar and scrub that works better than a lip scrub and just go in like circular motions I like to go ahead and just wipe off the excess so I'm just gonna rub this in a little further exfoliating and after I wipe that off I like to use something that's going to plump my lips a little bit this way by the time I get to my lips they're juicier they're plumper and they just look so much better NYX pump it up lip plumper this is totally unnecessary you don't need to do this but this is what I would do when getting ready for any kind of event. I'm gonna do the eyes first today, simply because your foundation, your concealer, everything will look flawless, and then all you need to do is go ahead and just get some eyeshadow fallout on your face and the whole thing is ruined. So we're going to bypass, and we're just gonna do the eyes first because it's so much easier. 
So to prime my lids today, I'm going to be using a concealer. I like to use concealer because it cancels out any darkness, any redness, any anything. It cancels it all out so you have a clean slate. NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. And I'm just going to pat that on my lids. Blend it in with a brush. You can blend it in with your fingers. It doesn't really matter. Just pack it on there. Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. Fluffy brush, it doesn't matter, any brush you have. And I'm just gonna pat this on the lid. Using my Lorac Pro Palette, this is what it looks like. It just has some really pretty, like basic brown and shimmers. Oh God, I look scary up close. My allergies are so bad. Like you can see how dark my under eyes are. It's crazy. So I'm gonna go in with this terracotta shade right here. Somewhat of a flat, fluffy brush. This is a Mikasa. E320 and I like to focus it on the outer portion of the eye first so really like push it in like this and then just blend what's ever left on the brush across just windshield wiper motions and then pushing it towards the lash line so see what I'm doing I'm pushing it towards the lash line like bringing it in on the outer third of the lid and then bringing it into the inner corner grab this brown shade right here smaller fluffy brush JH37 Morphe pat this on the outer third of the eye can you see what I'm doing I hope you guys can see and I'm just like doing small brush strokes like in towards the inner corner if you are new to makeup and you're not like super well versed or experienced I would try this out like try your makeup before you go to bed and this way you know you're just gonna wash it off it's not like you're gonna wear it out anywhere some nights I'll come home, I'll work out, and then before I hop in the shower, I'll practice my eyeliner because God knows I suck at a cat eye. I suck at a wing. It's so bad. It's just like, I think I let my emotions get the best of me. But if you just sit down, you know, where there's no pressure, you're not going anywhere, you're just going to wash your face and go to bed, that's the best way to practice your makeup. So I've dipped into this brown color at least three times, and I'm just stamping and pressing, stamping and pressing. And I kept that brown below the crease. I didn't bring it into the crease. I want it to be a very, very clean smoky eye. Now I'm going to grab the shade Medallion. It's kind of like a champagne shimmer with my finger. And I'm going to stamp that on the inner portion of the eye where we have not put any shadow on. Just for blending purposes, I'm going to go back into Terracotta, which is the first shade that we used in our crease. Flatter, fluffy brush again. The same one we used the first time. And I'm just going to blend this into the crease one more time. I'm gonna go back into that dark brown shade and I'm just gonna reinforce that outer third. You can make it darker. If you want, you can go in with a black and make it even more darker. And I'm just stamping over where I put that dark brown initially. I'm just going back over it just to reinforce it. I want it to be a little bit darker. Now, if you wanted to make it more of an elongated look, you could grab some more brown and poke it up like a little bit. See how I'm like pressing it a little higher and then dragging it down? That'll create like kind of like a little wing effect. But it's up to you. You don't have to do this. If you want a rounder eye, that's totally fine. But if you bring it out a little bit like I'm showing you, it'll give you like a longer, more almond-shaped eye. And it just makes the look like a little bit more dramatic. I'm going to take what's ever left on that brush. I'm not dipping back into that dark brown anymore. And I'm just going to whisk it into the crease, just over what we already did. Okay, so I timed how long it took me to do the other eye, and it was literally less than three minutes. So three shades, three minutes. Grab a makeup remover wipe, and I'm just going to clean up my under eyes. Now, I don't really see any fallout on my face, but... There probably is some. So I'm just gonna wrap my pointer finger and I'm just gonna whisk this under my eye. Can you see that? There's some shadow on there. So that would have been mixed in with our foundation, which we do not want. I'm not pressing hard because I wanna leave that moisturizer on my face, but I'm just, you know, just going anywhere where this could have fallen out on my face. The best primer, in my opinion, is the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. A little bit on my hands. Well, that's not really a little bit. It's like a generous amount. I'm going to rub it between my fingers, and I'm going to apply it over the skin. And I'm putting this everywhere, but really focus on the areas where your makeup tends to leave first. So for me, that's my chin, 
and that's my nose. You know, if you're going to an event, I would imagine you're going to kiss a lot of people hello, you're going to be drinking, and like your glass is going to hit your nose, and that's going to move your foundation. So make sure you are primed. This is like sweat proof. You know, your makeup is not moving. This really holds it down, and it really helps to create that barrier so that when your skin does start to produce oils, they don't poke through as much as they typically would. So I do really highly recommend this primer for special occasions, especially in hotter, humid weather, for sure. The NARS Natural Radiant Long Wear, and I am in the shade Vienna. I'm gonna be using a sponge. Pressing powder, foundation, whatever it is into your skin is going to last the longest amount of time. So I'm gonna be using this Real Technique sponge. I ran it under the faucet and I can squeeze it and there's no water coming out. So that means it's damp. You don't want your sponge to be wet because it's just not gonna go well for you. Your foundation's gonna get really, really cakey and nobody wants that. Two pumps on the back of my hand. I'm gonna pick it up with my sponge and I'm gonna stamp this into the skin. Now, if you have oilier skin, I would highly suggest Using the Bare Minerals Bare Pro Foundation, this stuff will not budge on you at all. Definitely want to make sure you're pouncing into the sides of your nose. You don't want it to get cakey over there or crepey. Notice I'm not putting it underneath the eyes. That's because we're going to go in with concealer. And again, you don't want too much product on your face. The least amount of layers will move the least amount, if that makes any sense. And be sure, because you're gonna be in pictures, there's gonna be a lot of pictures taken, that you are blending your foundation down your neck. If you're wearing like a strapless dress or anything that's like low cut, I would put the foundation all down your neck, all down your chest, and just make it one seamless shade. If you're gonna be in pictures and you don't want that demarcation line, you don't wanna see where your foundation ends because then it's obvious you're wearing foundation you know you want your skin to just look like that flawless okay so that is three pumps for me and I feel really really good about this so for concealer today I'm gonna keep on with my NARS radiant creamy concealer I think this stuff is really great if you want something that's a little bit thicker and more high coverage I would always recommend the Tarte Tape shade and I'm gonna put that underneath the eyes and definitely make sure that you get it in here. That's where a lot of people have a lot of darkness. I definitely do, so I'm gonna put some there. Concealer down my nose, because like I said, you're kissing people, you're drinking, you know. Your makeup tends to leave your nose first. So if you put that extra layer of makeup, it has to go through two layers of makeup before your skin shows, if that makes any sense. So that's why I do that. And I like to put a little bit on my chin, a little bit around my nose, because I get red there as well. And I'm going to blend out my under eyes last, because I like to blend them and then set them really quickly. This way they don't start creasing, and then you set fine lines. And also, leaving the concealer underneath your eyes a little bit longer makes it dry a little bit so it's more it becomes a little bit more high coverage I'm gonna take some setting mist because I have very dry under eyes and my concealer can get a little crusty crinkly and I'm gonna take my time because we did put that eyeshadow on and I don't want to mess up my eyeshadow I have two powders for you guys that are really really great options when I'm trying to get my makeup to last a long time but I don't want my powders to dry me out because I do have very dry skin Kat Von D shade and light palette these first two colors right here I like to do a mix of the peach and the yellow and that really does help brighten the under eyes so if you're someone that has very dark under eyes and you have circles i would use these two mixed together on my sponge because it's going to help to color correct on top of your concealer or if you are someone that has very dry skin hourglass fail translucent setting powder so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to use the kat von d for today just because like you guys saw, I said my allergies are kind of acting up, and then I feel like my under eyes are a little bit darker than normal. I'm just going to look up, get rid of any of those creases that may have occurred while I was just talking you guys through the powders. Stamp them out, and now I'm just going to go in. I'm going to take a swipe of the peach and a swipe of the yellow. Stamp that underneath the under eye. So I'm going to take that hourglass powder. I'm going to dump some in the top of the lid, pick up the powder in the lid. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna push it into my hand. I wanna make sure that it's really in that sponge and I don't want too much powder. I don't wanna have cake face. Slightly press this all over the skin. So it makes it one with your skin. Your face isn't gonna look cakey. You're not gonna look powdery. And I'm just stamping this everywhere. If you have dry skin like me, 
This is definitely gonna work for you. We're gonna go in a couple times with a setting spray, so don't worry, it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna do one extra layer on my nose where my makeup moves, so that's a common issue. Go ahead, take this into your hand, and then put it over your nose. Now, if you are very, very oily anywhere, you can go ahead with a second layer of powder, but that's all that I'm gonna do because I do have very dry skin. Now, I'm looking very flat. We need to make some dimension, put some more shadows into our face, so now we need to contour. BH Cosmetics Satin Finish Bronzer in Golden Gal. You're gonna go from the top of your ear down. And I like to keep my contour to about there. So right where my eye begins, that's as far in as I'll go. Because I find that, you know, if you bring it in too far, it can kind of make your face droop. And the point of contouring is to make your face look more structured and lifted. I'll take a little bit of bronzer on that brush and I'll swoop it like right here. And that's going to get rid of my double chin. And then bring it along your jawline because that's going to make your jaw look more pronounced. Just make your whole face look a little bit more structured. I'm going to make my forehead smaller. Pushing this into the hairline. It kind of looks stupid when you do a contour and you don't push it into the hair because you can see like the bronzer and then it's lighter here and it kind of just like makes it obvious. Take a little bit on that brush and I'm going to put it right where my temple is and sweep it up into my hair. And you can just see my cheekbone looks so much lifted because it has a shadow here. So it just looks so much higher than this side. But we want to be even. Hello. So I'm going to do it on this side too. I don't want to contour my nose like crazy. You can go ahead and just take this brush and go down the sides of your nose like this. Before we move on to blush and everything else, I'm going to go ahead and do one setting mist all over my face. Let that dry. Try not to talk or make facial expressions while your setting spray is drying because your makeup's gonna move. Let's move on to the brows. BH Studio Pro. This is the Shade and Define Duo Brow Pencil and I am in the shade Brunette. This doesn't have a spoolie. You can use any spoolie from any of your brow products or you can go on Amazon and buy spoolies or like dirt cheap on Amazon. Brush them up, the skinny pen-like end and then it has that like triangle end. Now I'm using the pencil side to just underline the bottom of my brow. I like a bolder under brow and I think it's important to pick either the top or the bottom to strongly define because if you do both it doesn't look nearly as natural. And I'm just doing light hair strokes. Brush them down to see the top of my brow. Take the tip of the triangle towards my nose. So I'm kind of laying that triangle on the side and I'm just going to brush up. I'm going to recommend using a brow gel because this will really ensure that not only does that brow product stay on all day, but it's also going to keep your hairs in place all day as well. Hourglass Arch Brow Shaving Gel, and I'm just going to use a clear one. Another at-home hack, spray the end of the spoolie with some hairspray and then quickly go in and brush your brows and that will do the same exact thing. Morphe Spirit, I like this. It stays on me a decent amount. It lasts a pretty long time and it's just, it goes well with my complexion. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to take a fluffy angled brush. This is a JH04. What's ever left on my brush, I'm just going to pump it down my nose and then I'll go like this just to give that like sun kissed look. I'm going to bake my face just a little bit and I'm going to take the flat side of this sponge, carve out my contour. So we're going to clean up this contour a little bit. I'm not putting like too much, just a nice veil of powder. That's kind of like a beard. That's what you want it to look like on the sides of my nose and under my eyes. I'm going to put a little bit on my forehead. We're going to let this sit for a few minutes. I don't have a ton on my face. We're not crazy baking. It's just a very light bake. If you have oilier skin, I would highly recommend going in with a little bit more powder and maybe leave it on a minute or two longer than I'm about to leave it on. So let's move on to the eyes really quickly. Lash curler. If you're going somewhere that's hot 
or you're going to a wedding and you might be emotional, I would highly recommend you using a waterproof mascara. Tarte Lights Camera Splashes. But I'm not going to be using this because I'm literally doing this makeup, taking some pictures, washing it off my face. So I don't want to have to deal with waterproof mascara. But if I was going somewhere, actually, I would definitely wear that. When applying your mascara, you really want to make sure that you get the roots nice and dark. So really get in there. If you have smaller eyes, okay, and you want to look more awake, then just apply mascara to your top lashes. If you have bigger eyes and you want a more dramatic look, then I would definitely go ahead and throw them on the bottom lash line, but I'm kind of into this. I like how doughy my eyes look right now. Like I look like a little like Bambi dough and I'm kind of into it. This has been baking on my face for I want to say like maybe three minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take a clean fluffy brush. I'm just gonna wipe this off. another round of setting spray really quick and that setting spray is really going to adhere to the highlighter and make it pop a little bit more Becca vanilla quartz I use a little like flat fluffy brush and I'm just gonna put this on the highest points of my cheeks a little bit down at the bridge of my nose so I'm just gonna pop it on right here little sparkle on my chin my cupid's bow take it on a pencil brush I'm gonna put this on the inner corner of my eyes just for like a pop of brightness. This is gonna make your eyes look more awake and bigger and just a little bit more open. Put it underneath the brow bone. We are glowing. I'm gonna take another round of setting spray. I know this is a lot of setting spray, but a mist. One of the best universal lip liners. This is MAC in the shade Whirl. Overline them at the very center and the bottom. And then I'm gonna to go to the outside and follow my natural line to meet that overline at the bottom. And I'm going to overline my cupid's bow. If you don't know what a cupid's bow is, it's that M that your lip makes at the top. And then I'm gonna bring it to my natural lip on the bottom. To ensure that this lasts all day, I'm gonna take my lip liner and I'm going to fill in my entire lip. So just kind of apply this like you would a lipstick. I'm gonna go in with Fenty because that's my favorite liquid lipstick. This is the shade Uncuffed and that like matches this lip liner perfectly. Take the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. Lucky brush, I'm gonna go back to this Morphe E53 and I'm going to take every shade lightly tap off the excess and just run this all over my face now what this does is it kind of gives like a photo filter like snapchat it just makes your skin look very blurry like you're literally wearing a snapchat filter that just gives a really nice dewy look all over the face and because that is powder go in one more time with setting spray not a lot though this is the finished makeup look. Now, the last thing that I want to tell you guys is that you should definitely, A, bring the lipstick that you applied. You're definitely going to need to reapply. And I would also definitely bring the lip liner. This way you can perfect it. And on top of that, you definitely need to bring powder with you. That's just in case like you get a little oily. For me, I would take the Hourglass Veil setting powder and I would take a little, little brush like this because when you're gonna go in and fix up your face, you don't wanna put too much powder on your face. You really want to spot correct. And then if you even wanna go a step further, I would bring your sponge. Now, what's great about this Real Technique sponge, not only is it drugstore, but it also comes in a case. I would take this and I would take a setting spray. This guy is kind of big. You can get like a travel size setting spray. I would just be careful with whatever setting spray it is because if you are oily, you definitely don't want to use a dewy setting spray. I like this. It's very much like the MAC Fix Plus and I know that that comes in a travel size. So what I would do is I would take my little sponge in my case and I would take my Fix Plus and all you're gonna do is gently mist the sponge and then stamp over anywhere that maybe it looks a little cakey, anywhere that's moved. 
say like you're on a vent, you're having fun, you're smiling a lot, say your smile lines start to poke out, moisten the sponge with the setting spray and stamp it lightly. And it's just gonna move any of that back to where it needs to be and it's gonna get it out of any of those creases. And that's really it. That's all that I have to say. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you guys learned how to maybe prepare yourself for you know, a summer wedding that might be coming up or summer event. Maybe you have a dance, whatever it is you may be. I hope that you took something along with you. If you did and you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up down below. Also, if you have not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so. I would love to have you. And also click that bell notification button right next to the subscribe button. This way you get a notification whenever it is I'm uploading a video here on my channel. I had a great time as always. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I'll see you in my next one. Bye finders. Mm -hmm.